What's up everyone? This is Pat with Infinite Fitness coming at you guys with another video today. Today's video is going to be on three issues with restrictive diets. So I'm sure that you've all heard before you need to find a sustainable approach, but today we're going to break that down and talk about why it matters so much and why restrictive diets have so many issues with them. So the information that I'm gonna be providing you with today in this video is going to be based off of almost a decade of coaching experience, working with people losing weight, um, and also tons of research. So we're gonna be talking about three issues with restrictive diets, we're gonna talk about some weight gain statistics, and we're gonna talk about why these two factors intersect and why this creates so many issues. So anyway, stay tuned, let's get into today's lesson. So the first thing that I wanna dive into in this video is weight gain statistics. So if we look at weight gain statistics in the US population among adults, the average adult American gains two to four pounds per year. So what I wanna cover with this is, if someone is only gaining two to four pounds per year, it means that they're not gaining weight on a normal basis. So here's what I mean by that. They're not gaining weight on like a Monday through Friday basis every single week. If someone was gaining weight every single week or even every single month, that would be a gain of 10 to 50 pounds per year. And that's not what we're seeing in these statistics. What we're seeing is a gain of two to four pounds per year over a long period of time in the average American adult. So what that tells us is that weight gain is not happening every single week or every single day or even every single month. It's something that's happening a few select times throughout the year. And so this is going to lead us into our first issue with restrictive diets. So, issue number one with restrictive diets. Restrictive diets don't account for abnormal. So here's what I mean by that. When you research a restrictive diet plan, usually there's going to be a lot of rigorous prep involved or elimination of several food groups. This is something that's a little bit easier to do on a Monday through Friday basis or when you're preparing food at home, but it doesn't account for the fact that human beings are social creatures. So if you're following a restrictive diet, how are you going to diet at social events, weddings, vacations, holidays? How are you going to follow that diet that is super restrictive? Are you gonna bring your own food? Because I mean, that is kind of socially unacceptable in many cases. And it can also be perceived as rude if you're going to somebody else's house for dinner. So this becomes a large issue going back to the overall statistics on weight gain. If people aren't gaining weight on a regular basis, instead they're gaining weight during these, you know, social events or holidays or like, you know, maybe a, a pound is gained here or there on a vacation or a pound is gained here or there during the holidays. These restrictive diets are not gonna be all that helpful with the weight gain problem because they're only setting you up for success when you have complete control over what you are putting in your mouth. So that is a big problem with restrictive diet. The second issue stemming from restrictive diets is there's no education. So if we go back to the real problem here, Weight is not gained on a Monday through Friday basis. It's not gained on a regular basis. It's gained in abnormal situations. So because there's no education with most restrictive diets, you don't learn to handle the real problem. So most restrictive diets center around eat this, not that, or avoid these food groups, or only eat during this period of time. Those are not the real problems that are creating weight gain in the first place. So if we look at the stats on weight gain, most of the time it happens around the holidays or around big trips or big social events. So let's assume that you have somebody that's following a restrictive diet and they go to one of these social events and they're only allowed to eat certain food groups. That's probably only going to last for so long, especially if someone enjoys eating the food groups that they're restricting. So let's say that you really enjoy eating pasta or carbohydrates and you're following a ketogenic diet. Unless you're able to have the willpower for the rest of your life to never eat that food group again, it doesn't solve the real problem. The real problem might be you don't know how to control your portions with that particular food group, or you don't know how to moderate your intake of 
the overall food groups that you enjoy consuming. So that's the second issue that arises here with these restrictive diets is they might solve a problem short term and you know get you to drop some weight in the short term, but they don't educate you on what you need to do for the long term to actually maintain that progress. The third issue that stems from restrictive diets, and in my opinion, the most detrimental, is that the diet becomes a crutch and it feeds what's known as the Last Supper mentality. So the Last Supper mentality is a phenomenon that was popularized in the book, Intuitive Eating, by Evelyn Tribble and Elise Resch. And basically what it talks about is, when people restrict foods, they have a tendency to go off plan. And when they go off plan, there is a phenomenon known as the Last Supper mentality where foods that people believe are bad for them or that they shouldn't be eating, they consume in copious amounts and then decide to make it their last supper before they get back on their plan again. So again, going back to the previous issue of elimination diets and you know how they don't provide any education, if someone enjoys a food, they're going to consume it again in their lifetime. So if we see a break in willpower, and someone decides to get off this restrictive diet plan and consume whatever they want, it can create this last supper mentality where people just consume as much of the foods that they want to be consuming anyway as they can until they get back on the diet. Now this can also create this crutch mentality where let's say somebody falls off a diet plan and they regain 10 to 15 pounds or you know x amount of pounds what they might be saying to themselves in their head is well all i'll do you know when i decide to get back on my grind or whatever is i'll just go back to following the diet so it becomes a crutch and so the reason why this is a problem in the book fat loss forever lane norton talks about how over time as you lose weight weight loss becomes more and more challenging and less and less rewarding because of metabolic adaptation. So let's say that we have somebody that begins their fat loss phase at a resting metabolic rate of 2,000 calories per day. Let's say after their initial bout of dieting, their new resting metabolic rate is down to 1,800 or 1,700 calories. Unless they do work to rebuild their metabolism, that is going to be their baseline metabolism. So, even if they decide to hop back on the diet in the future, because their metabolism is lower, the diet is going to be less rewarding. So if in between bouts of dieting, they're constantly refeeding themselves, build, you know, gaining more fat, regaining the fat that they lost, it's gonna be harder and harder to lose the fat each time around. So, even though this restrictive diet might seem like a crush, this becomes a big issue because they're not going to lose the same amount of weight every time they follow the diet. So, that is our video for today. I wanna to end today's video with three closing thoughts. Now, I know you've heard this before, but finding a sustainable long-term approach is really the only way to solving the weight gain and weight regain problem. I hope that the three issues that we talked about with restrictive diets shed some light onto why it's so important to find a sustainable approach. But if it didn't, and you're still on the fence and thinking about following you know, some popular diet, I wanna pose a question to you. Think about all of the popular diets that exist today. Whole30, ketogenic, intermittent fasting, so on and so forth. There's a ton of them. Despite the fact that there are so many popular diets out there, we are still struggling with an obesity epidemic in this country. So if restrictive diets were really the answer to the problem, don't you think that one of the popular ones would have worked by now and everyone would be following? So the last piece that I wanna leave you with is the real way to finding what works for you. It's going to be through trial and error, but also through education. So if you're still on the fence about you know, restrictive dieting and how to find a sustainable approach, I would highly encourage you to do some research. And by research, I do not mean hopping on Google and looking up what's the best diet or what's sustainable for me. 
I mean doing real research, and that can be in the form of taking professional courses, such as precision nutrition, or some other form of governing body and nutrition course. Hiring a coach that can guide you along that pathway and kind of be a BS indicator for you. And simply experimenting over time. So I hope that you enjoyed the video today. I hope that you learned something. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button. As always, stay strong.